Only 34 people. How about others? Oh, some of them have uh, placements, right? Yeah. Okay. So in few classes, so we have started a couple of the classes back. We have started with module five, and we were. Uh, what the module five is speaking about is, uh, it is completely about networking. So how Java will be helpful because Java is a programming language. So Java programming language how this will help uh, for identifying a socket uh, identifies as an endpoint in the network then how what what is the use of socket socket uh, uh, is a uh, if it is a single system it serves many different clients at one time so that's the reason we use a socket so then uh, uh, communication so from uh, i'm able to now communicate one single staff is able to communicate for 60 people at one time so the same way here, we have a different uh, communication protocols. One is internet protocol. So when I'm speaking, you should reach in the same order. But IP internet protocol, it will not guarantee that it will reach in the same order. So for that reason, we have one more that is TCP, where uh, this will guarantee whatever I am speaking, you're able to listen in the same order. Along with that, uh, so if I speak now, and if you get after two uh, five minutes, then it will it, it is not in a synchronization, and it is not in the fast. So to make uh, even whenever I speak, you sh the same minute uh, you should also able to listen. So in that case, we are uh, using a user datagram packet to support the TCP so that uh, the packets whatever is there, it should reach uh, to the client faster. Way. That's about a TCP. In the same way, for uh, charging, we use separate port. For internet, we use separate port. For pen drive, we use separate port. For headsets, we use separate ports, right? So even in the laptop. Similar fashion, even in the networking also, we have a different ports for different things. So 21 is for FTP, 23 is for Telnet, and 25 is for email. So the same way, 43 is for who is, and 79 is for finger. 80 is for HTTP. Then the key component here we have is IPv4 or IPv6. So what is this IPv4? IPv4 was an older version of internet protocol where it was considering internet address only for 32-bit. Whereas IPv6, it is a uh, next version where uh, it is using 128-bit uh, addresses and it is organized in a 16-bit chunks. So that's how the IPv6 uh, is a bit larger than the IPv4. So then what are the different uh, classes and interfaces available for networking? Yes, there are so many inbuilt uh, uh, packets, uh, classes and interfaces available in a um, package in the package called as a networking. So where we, whenever it is required, we can use. Same way how you have math.h in that we have a square root, tan, all the uh, cot, sign, all those uh, uh, methods are available in a math uh, header file. So similar fashion, even in the networking. So these are the different uh, packages available in a java.net uh, header file. And these are the packages. Again, within this, we have uh, interfaces. These are the different interfaces, whichever is required for you, for your uh, um, projects, you can use them. In the same way, internet address. So here we have an internet address IPv4 or IPv6. So the factory methods which are generally we use is these three that is get local get name get by name or get all so then the description about a get local uh, get by name and uh, get all so that's about thing and one program we have seen then different instance methods which are required for you uh, whichever cases then you may use all these uh, instance methods then difference when do we use so earlier, when the Java was in the earlier version, then they were using a Internet 4 address. Now, because IPv6 is changed, so now they started using a Internet 6 addresses. The next is the TCP IP client sockets. So where the server sockets are used for as a listener, in the same way, client socket, client classes are used for a client. 
So this is a program which uh, shows how the uh, get uh, input stream sockets, what is the different so port numbers. Uh, so it explains about this along with that, what is a website for which we, we are using and taking that and storing it as a buffer. So then we have a URL uh, function. So then this is the URL to observe a download package. So then URL connections is a general purpose class for accessing the attributes of a remote uh, resource. So then URL connection defines several methods. Here is a sampling that is uh, get uh, content, get content type, get date, get expiration. So then HTTP URL connection. So how is this uh, uh, connection is? So it will be using an open connection. Uh, then we have a HTTP URL connection. Then these are the different uh, uh, static Boolean things where uh, uh, what is a request method, what is a response, response code, response message, then how uh, to set a redirect. So then how to throw a request methods. So then we to identify you people, we, you have a USN number. So the similar fashion, uh, for URLs, we have a URI. So what is this URI stands for is Uniform Resource Identifier. I want to identify that this is a laptop of which company, what is the properties, all this. So for that, you are using. So the same fashion, URI is used to identify what is the resources right now it is being used. So in the same way, cookies. So you would have seen in your uh, uh, banking thing where uh, for some time limit will be given after that. Uh, the cookie, uh, uh, the page will be restarting. So in that case, we are using a cookies. Then TCP slash IP server socket. So then uh, 50, that is default is 50. So then server socket throws uh, input output exception. Then server socket uh, uh, port and maximum queue. Then server socket port maximum queue and internet local address. So then datagram. So datagrams are bundles of uh, information passed between machines. These are the different constructors, that is datagram packet, datagram uh, byte data in size, uh, datagram packet byte data offset and size. So then datagram packet, data size, internet address, data packets. So then datagram packet, intent address, get address, byte, then length, get length. So internet address, that is get address, byte, length, uh, get length, get offset, get port, set address, set data, set data, uh, then set length and set port. So then collection frameworks. So these are the different uh, collections available. So then these are the interfaces which are available. Uh, and collection overview. So in the ad hoc basis, uh, uh, earlier we were using a dictionary, vector, stack and properties. So to replace all of this, we are using a collections. Uh, uh, collections. So in this collections, uh, you know, we may, so static array is also available, but uh, instead of static where we are wasting memory, then we can go for a dynamic array. And we can use a linked list, trees, hash tables. Then recent changes to the collections. So here, along with that, along with the uh, uh, linked list, the trees, uh, hash tables, uh, there is a added a feature of auto-boxing and uh, unboxing. The generic uh, fundamental things uh, uh, and the collection frameworks, uh, we put together everything and see what are the re-engineered for it. Collection interfaces. So these are the different collection interfaces. So DQ, collection, list, navigable set, queue, set theory, and sorted set. All these uh, we use. So suppose if I want to sort something, then you, we can go for a sorted set. So in the same way, uh, we, have, we have some more uh, collection interfaces that is comparator, random access, iterator, and list iterator. Comparator, where I want to combine two objects and see whether both of them are same or not. Then we can use a comparator. And the same way, iterator and list iterator enumerates the objects within a class. Means it encapsulates. So then by implementing a random access, uh, it will support efficient and random access of, a, of its elements. Collection interface. So we have a syntax for that interface. You have to use and what is a collection and what is E. So here E is a 
uh, type of object that the collection will hold. Then collection class. So now that you are familiar with the collection interface, you are uh, ready to examine the standard class that implements them. So these are the different uh, classes and their description. So then array list class, array list class extends array list and implements the list interface that is class array list E. So these are the different uh, array list classes. Then linked list class, linked list class extends abstract sequential list and implements the list Q, DQ and a Q. And the same way accessing a collection via an iterator that is boolean has next, E next, avoid the remove. So then using an iterator before we can uh, access a collection through an iterator. So methods returns the iterator to start the collection. In the same way, uh, I want to add some object or I want to find out what is the next element or I want to find out what is previous thing, what is next, uh, what is the index, next index, what is the previous and what is the previous index, if I want to remove some elements. So these are the built-in functions which we require can be used. So in the same way, sorting user-defined classes. Now, I have written my own class, but I want sort them. Yes, it is possible using the sorting user-defined classes in the collections. So next is random access interface. So random means, so you would have used in your ADA language, a random uh, method. So what the random method will be doing, it will generate automatically some numbers for you. So the same way here, random access interface contains it because it is an interface, it will not it will not implement anything, but it will be having a abstract uh, collections where you uh, elements so we can efficiently use them. In the same way, working with map, I think you'll every one of us nowadays when we start going uh, to one place to another place and we want the directions, we use a Google map. Similar fashion here, even you can use a map uh, in your uh, using a Java method to implement uh, the mapping part. So in that case, uh, there are two important keys in this method. One is a key and a value. In the same way, these are the interfaces. Uh, map, uh, map dot entry, navigable, then sorted map. So these are the interfaces available. The same way, map interface, map interface ma maps unique key to the values. So the same way, method and description, white clear boolean contains keys. So these are the different methods available, and this, those are the descriptions. And sorted map interface, sorted map interface extends map. Uh, it ensures that the entire entries are maintained in ascending order based on the keys. Then sorted map is generic and is declared uh, as shown here. So these are the different uh, methods available and these are the descriptions. So then head map, chain map, sub map, first key, last key. A navigable map interface. Navigable map interface was added by Java AC six extended uh, sorted maps. But then the, in the same way, map class, abstract map, enumeration map, hash map, tree map, uh, weak hash map, linked hash map, and identifying a hash map. Then hash map, uh, hash map class extends abstract map and implements the map interface. So then tree map class. So this is also a extension of abstract map and implements a navigable uh, interface. So then linked hash map uh, is also a extended uh, hash map. It maintains a linked list of the entire entries in the map. So then identify ha hash map class, identify hash map, extends abstract uh, map and implements the map uh, interface. Then comparator, both the tree set and the tree map uh, store elements in sorted order. However, <clears throat> it is comparator that defines precisely what sorted order means. By default, these classes store their elements by using what uh, Java refers to as um, natural ordering. Collection algorithm, collection framework uh, defines several algorithms that can be applied to collection side maps. These algorithms are defined as static methods within the class. So these are the different uh, 
uh, static things that is static uh, boolean so you can add all collections so insert the element specified by the element into the collection specified by c so you would have uh, studied in your data structure how the insertion uh, I, whether I can insert in the beginning, whether I can insert at the end, or whether I can insert in the middle. So that's what here this also, this uh, method is also doing. So the similar fashion, static uh, T and QT returns the last in first out view of the C. So then binary search, so searching for values in list order uh, according to C returns the position of values in the list or a negative values if values is not found. So then static that is binary search, search for value in list. Uh, the list must be sorted, returns the position of values in list or negative values if values is not found. Then static collection returns and runtime uh, type safe view of a collection attempt to uh, insert an uh, incompatible element will cause a class uh, cast exception. So then array, so which we already know, uh, it stores a number of, if you want to store number of elements, we use a class. So in the same way here, array class, uh, array a class provides various methods uh, that are, that various methods that are uh, useful when working with arrays. These uh, methods help uh, bridge the gap between the collection and arrays. So what this each method defined by array is uh, examined here as list method returns a list that is backed by a specified array. In other words, both the list and the array refer to the same location. It has the following signature that is static T list as, uh, as list. So here array is an array that contains the data. And then why generic collections? So you would have seen, so when you're filling your exam form, uh, the same form will be the, given for all 60 people uh, that is called as a generic form and uh, once you fill your details into that that becomes for an individual thing same way here when generic collection it is common common to everyone later when you want you can use them so that's what here the entire collection framework was refitted for a generic uh, when jdk5 was released so the every time when the java is been uh, versions are increased so along with that this generic collections was added in a java file furthermore the collection frameworks is arguable the single most important use of generic in the java api the reason for this is that generics add type safety to the collection frameworks before moving on it is worth taking some time to examine in detail the significance of this uh, improvement. Let's begin with an example that uses pre-generic code. The following program stores a list of string in an array list and then displays the content of the list. Pre-generic examples that uses a collection. So import java.utility, class old style. So public static void means string arguments array list list equals to new array list so here these lines store string but any type of object can be stored in old style code there is no convenient way to restrict the type of object uh, stored in a collection uh, list dot add so list dot add two list dot add three list dot add four so iterator is list dot iterator while uh, iterator as next so i want to know what is the next value then we use a next then store that uh, in a string called object called as a str then print them and uh, print the length till it goes to the last one so then legacy classes and interface so earlier versions of java utility did not include the collection framework instead it defined several classes and an interface uh, provide that provides an ad hoc method of storing objects when collections were added in the version J2SC 1.2, several of original classes were re-engineered to support the collection interface. Thus, there are full compatible with the framework, while no classes they actually been deprecated. One has been rendered absolutely. Of course, when a collection duplicates the functionality of a le legacy classes, you will usually 
want to use a collection for new code in general the legacy class are supported because there is still code that uses them one uh, other point none of the classes uh, collection classes are synchronized but all the legacy classes are synchronized this thing, distinction may be important in some situation of course you can easily synchronize collections too by using one of the algorithm provided uh, here so the vectors vector implements a dynamic array so that's a dynamic array means what you know, at a runtime you can allocate the memory so it is similar to our array list so this what vector is similar so even in the array list what it is doing so memory is allocated at the runtime but the two differences uh, vector is synchronized so here whereas in array list it was not synchronized whereas in a vector list is a synchronized synchronized means when one resource is used by somebody that will be locked until unless they release that so that is what is called as a synchronized and it can contain many legacy methods uh, that are not part of a collections framework with the advent of collection vector was reengineered to extend abstract class and do implement the list interface with the release of jdk5 it was a re it row fit it for generic and re engineer to implement iterable this means that vector is fully compatible with collections and a vector can have its content iterated by a enhanced for loop vector is declared like this so class vector here e specifies the type of element that will be sorted here our vector constructor a vector so vector int size vector int size so these are the different uh, uh, vector constructors one with par without parameter one with only size parameter one with size and increment parameter and the generic one you can we can give as a collection and extends the collection similar fashion you would have studied in a data structure stack stack is what uh, one side it is closed other side it is opened and you keep inserting the elements so whichever element is at the last inserted that will be one which will be coming out first so that we know about a stack stack is a subclass of vector so whereas in this case uh, in java so when we say stack it is a subclass for the vector that implements a standard last in first out stack so stack only defines the default constructor uh, which creates an empty stack with the release of jdk5 stack was refitted for generic and it is declared as class stack e so what is this e is e specifies the type of element stored in the stack so in the stack we can insert integers we can insert character we can insert string we can insert floating so what are the different types so we represent that by e so uh, stack includes all the methods uh, defined by vector and adds several of its own to put an object on the top of the stack uh, call push to remove and return the top elements so in the same way pop so why do we use a pop so i want to em uh, delete something then we use a pop so an empty stack exception is thrown if you call pop so if there are no elements in the uh, stack and if you still uh, delete uh, element then you will get a exception called as an empty stack so uh, when the invoking stack is empty you can uh, use a peek uh, to return but uh, not remove the top uh, object so the empty method returns true if nothing is on the stack the search method determines whether an object exists on the stack and returns the number of pops uh, that are required to bring it to the top so these are the different uh, methods available that is boolean empty uh, returns if the stack is empty and returns false if the stack contain elements then epeak uh, returns the element on the top of the stack uh, but does not remove it so epop uh, returns the element on the top of the stack uh, removing it in the process epush uh, e elements pushes elements on the stack element is also returned so in search then object element searches for elements in the stack if found its offset from the top of the stack is returned otherwise minus 1 is returned then dictionary dictionary is an abstract class 
that represents a key and value storage repository and operates like much like a map. So gives a key and a value if we can store the value in the dictionary object. Once the value is stored, we can retrieve it by using its key. Thus, like a map, a dictionary can be thought of as a list of key or a value pairs, although uh, not currently deprecated. Dictionary is classified as absolute uh, because it is fully su suppressed by the map. However, dictionary is still in use and thus is full discussed uh, with the advent of JDK5. Dictionary was made generic. It is uh, declared as a class dictionary K, V. And we know that what is K? K is a key and V is a value. So these are the methods that is enumeration, uh, V and elements. So purpose returns an enumeration of the value contained in the dictionary. So then we get, that is object key, returns the object that contains the value associated with the key. If a key is not in the dictionary, a null object is returned. Boolean is empty, returns true if the dictionary is empty, and returns false if it contains at least one key. Enumeration key case returns an enumeration of the keys contained in the dictionary. We put k key v value inserts a key and its value not into the dictionary returns null if the key is not already in the dictionary it returns the previous values associated with key if key is already in the dictionary we remove removes key and its value returns the value associated with the key if the key is not in the dictionary a null is returned then the size returns the number of entries in the dictionary so that's about your fifth module. Any doubt in this? Any doubt in this? You can ask me. Yeah, meanwhile, you can answer that. In the Today is four nine. Anaga. Yes, ma'am. Ananga is present. Abhilash. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Akil. Akrut. Yes, ma'am. Akrut. Yes, ma'am. Anusha. Anusha. Arvind. Arifula. Yes, ma'am. Veneka. Ma'am, he is attending okay. placements. Banu Prakash. Yes, ma'am. Bhargav. Ahmadullah. Chaitra. Ahmadullah present, ma'am. Yes, sir. Matt. Chaitra Chandana. Charan. Yes, ma'am. Darshan. Present, ma'am. Tiksha. Present, ma'am. Takshaini. Present, ma'am. Kishan. Arshit. Himlata. Present, ma'am. Kuma. Uma. Chayant. Present, ma'am. Divya. She is present, ma'am. Yeah. Kaushik. Present, ma'am. Lakshmi. Lavanya. Manish. Present, ma'am. My kisha, ma'am, Lakshmi. Manoj. Present, ma'am. Mohit. Naval. Present, ma'am. Navya. Navya is attending placements, ma'am. Okay. Nikhil. Present, ma'am. Panindra. Present, ma'am. Pavan. Puja. 
Present, ma'am. Well, Matt. Purnima, she also present. Attending the basement. Raman. Raman is there. He is also attending. Rashmi. Rupak. Yes, ma'am. Sai Kumar. Present, ma'am. Samir. Present, ma'am. Santosh. Present, ma'am. Satap. Present, ma'am. Sharan. Present, ma'am. Shashank. Shashank. Sheetal. Present, ma'am. Shivani. Present, ma'am. Soumya. Shri Vishnu. Spurti. Ma'am, Shri Vishnu present, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Sukandini. Present, ma'am. Sushma. Present, ma'am. Sushmita. Ma'am, both Sushmitas are attending placement. Okay. Tirta. Present, ma'am. Trupti. Trupti. Varsha. Present, ma'am. Veena. Present, ma'am. Okay. So by this, uh, we end with our uh, syllabus. So any doubts? Any doubts? Okay, so we'll start with out of syllabus thing. So this was about your syllabus part. So that's fine with the, you can study. I'll just send you all required materials. So before uh, we'll just have a look how the uh, Java is and how it is working. So you may know that Java is a programming. Just we have a overlook. So using uh, some online tool, and we take some examples. So this is beyond your syllabus. So this is just for you to uh, be familiar and uh, make ready for your replacements as well as industry ready. Using these things, we'll just learn. So then we know what is Java. Java is a uh, it's a programming language. Uh, Java is used to uh, why do you why this Java and where you can use you can use this Java even for developing a mobile apps so nowadays you can see every thing uh, started with apps so mobile apps are available so either you take shopping bank anything any app so everything now it is turning to a mobile so you can develop so many apps using a Java language along with that so we use a laptops and we want some websites so you can do so that is also web applications you can do then desktops so some some there may be some retail shop they only want their uh, business to be used uh, how to do that that also you can do with the desktop application in the same way kids are playing games yeah you can develop even games using a, a java and you can still do so many things so uh, for example so let us try this program you already know so what we are doing in this now so let's start learning uh, java so what is this java says to us java is a what is java java is a popular programming language and who created it it, it was created in the year 1995 and it was owned by oh, oracle earlier who developed this uh, java java was uh, developed by the oracle and more than 3 billion uh, devices run Java. So you can see even in presently, so most of the companies are using uh, Java. So you, th this is just a round figure saying that how many billion devices Java has been used. So then why this Java is used? You can develop a mobile application, especially for Android apps. Then you can develop a desktop application. You can develop a web application. You can develop a web server and application server. Then you can uh, do a games, then database collections, and much more. 
So why use of Java? Java works on different platforms, Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi, then etc. So why use Java? So you, you can use different platforms. So you can, so some will work only for some things, but it will work Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi. So you can use uh, all these. So it is one of the most popular gaming uh, programming language in the world. It is easy to learn and simple to use. It is open source and free. It is secure, fast and powerful. It has a huge community support. Uh, tens of billions of developers and Java has an object oriented language which gives a clear structure to programs and uh, allow codes to be reused uh, lower development class. Uh, Java is close to C++ uh, and C hash. It makes it easy for programmer to switch uh, to Java or vice versa. So it's not necessary to have any prior uh, experience so we can how to install the Java, I think you'll be knowing. Uh, some PCs might have a Java already installed. To check if you have a Java installed on Windows PC, search in the start bar uh, for Java or type the following prompt. So you can go there. You can just say Java and version. So if, uh, if Java is installed, you will see how it looks like. So that's what here you can see, Java version 11.0.1. .1. So this was 2018, 10, 16. So like this, you may have Java uh, AC, that is runtime environment, or you can have a J Java hotspot. So these are the different uh, Java installed on the computers. So, uh, or, so set up of the uh, Windows. So to install Java on a Windows, so go to system properties, click on control panel, system and security, system, advanced system setting, click on the environment, a variable button you uh, button under the advanced tab then select the path variable in system variable and click on the edit button click on the new button and add the path there java is installed followed by slash bin by default java is installed in c program files java jdk 11.0.1 .1. so in that case you will have to add a new path that is C program files, Java JDK 11.0.1. .1. So at last uh, open command prompt and type Java version to see if Java uh, is running on a, a machine. So uh, how Java can be installed step by step. So step one was that step two. So you can go that's what it has been shown here. What you have to do go for advanced and setting. So the same way in step three. So this is to set the environment variable and the path. And step five, so uh, edit the environment variable. And the last one, so you go to the command prompt and see how whether it, you, it is properly installed or not. Then to start quickly, so how the Java uh, um, program should be. So Java, in Java, every application begin with a class name uh, and then must be matching the file name. So always you have to remember the class name of the Java program and the file name of the Java program should be always same. So let us, let's create our own uh, first Java file called main.java, which can be done in any text editor. And the file should contain hello world message, which is written by the following code. That is public class main in public static void main string argument system dot out so how this will work so uh, this is public class main so that's what every java program whatever the name of the class it should be the same as the uh, file name so then uh, i've explained to you what is public static void main string and argument and system dot out dot println what it is just doing system is a class out is a uh, outside output class and print ln it is a method so whatever is there within this code that should be printed out so this is very simplest program so how to run this that was the one so other way in case if you have in your system java then you have to go java main dot uh, um, dot java java c main dot java this is a command uh, executing uh, compiling in a command prompt 
so the same way if you want to run so then what java main what is the file class name or a file name we have a java main then output uh, should read hello world uh, then uh, try it yourself so that then syntax uh, in this part so here why do uh, we require so every line of the code that runs in java must be inside a class in our example we named the class main a class should always start with the upper class so that's what they say what are the restrictions we have so whenever we have any class uh, the starting you should have a, a start as a capital letter upper case letter java is case sensitive that is my class and my class has a different meanings so hello world so then the main so what is this main main method is required and you'll see what in every java program that is a public static void main and the string and arguments any code inside the main method will be executed uh, we don't have to understand the keywords before and after the main we will come to know them bit by bit while reading this so now uh, just remember that every java program has a class name uh, must match with the file name and then every program must contain the main method so then we have a system dot out dot println so that is inside main method we can use a println method to print a line of text to the, to the screen and public static void main string and the argument then system dot out dot println so the curl braces uh, marks the beginning and end of the block of code each core statement must end with the semicolon so then exercise so here what it will do so if we say can anyone say what i have to write here what should i do what should i write here can anyone system dot out open till correct so what i have to write i have to write system says as why s t m system dot it's already there out dot println okay so let's submit yes show the answer is it right yes the answer is right okay so next we move on to the next part so if i want to comment something so today i have written some logic maybe after um, this logic I, i may require for one more project uh, but i don't remember what was that logic to make me to recollect what i have written the logic in that we use a comments for all programming not only for java even for in most of the programming if you are a good uh, program or a developer then you have to have a practice of writing a uh, comments so then how to write a comments comments i think you'll be knowing it will Uh, if you write make it as a comment line that will not be executed by the compilers so that's what here java comments so uh, comments can be used to explain java code and makes it more readable it can also be used to prevent execution when testing alternative code so if i if you have a single line you want to comment only for one line then you can use a, a two forward slashes so then this says that it is a single line commenting and any text uh, between single and the end of the line is ignored by the java that's what if you say comment then that will not be considered for execution so that what here you can see this is a comment so what that that is a, a single line and we just use it as a commenting so I, either you can use that way or this way so in case suppose if i want to use a multiple line so it is not fit in one single line i i have to take it to the second line so then the, it becomes a two line uh, comments In either you can give two slashes for each separate uh, lines but to say that uh, uh, two lines it's okay if you have five lines then for each one you have to write the you know, forward two forward slash for each line instead of that you can write a multi line comments so how do we write a multi line comments so start with slash and star and end with star and slash so this says that it is a multiple line commit so you can see the example there slash star this code 
a multi line uh, comment to explain the code yeah what i have to write here can anyone say first line what i have to write yes can anyone say what i have to write there single line comment what i have to write multi line comment what i have to write forward slash two forward slashes okay second line forward slash star slash star okay here here star slash star slash yes right so this is a thing which you have to use for a, a single line and a multi line commenting that's about a uh, comment so in the same way in other programming language uh, you have a variables so why do we have a variable we want to store something so then we use a variables so the same way even in java also we can use a variables so what are the variables variables are container for uh, storing data values in java there are uh, different types of variables so for example string so i want to store hello that is a string variable yes you can store but how within a double quotes then int uh, it stores a integer so what is a value for that such that 123 or minus 123 yes it is that is a int then float stores floating point number with the decimal such as 19.99 or minus 19.99 then char uh, stores uh, single characters such as uh, such as uh, a or b uh, character values are uh, surrounded by a single quotes then boolean stores values with two states that is true or false in the same way how to declare a variable so to to, uh, to declare or creating a variable to create a variable we must type the assign uh, its a value so you can see here type variable and a value so what is a type type which suppose either it can be integer or a string and what is a variable variable is a name of the variable such as x or a name uh, the equal sign is used as a assign value to the variable so to store that so we can see here the example string i want to store name yes we can store that but what is a data type we have string what is a variable that is a name and what is the value we want to store we want to store john so if you want to store john then we because it is a string you have we have to represent that within a double quotes so then you want to print them yes you can print them system dot out dot print ln and print so the output you will get it as a john similar fashion so you can do it for a integer so that was for a string now for a integer so you want you are storing 15 Uh, in the variable called as a minum because fifteen is an integer, so we are defining the data type as integer and we are just printing them. So in the similar fashion, so either you can do in a single line or a double line. Directly you can assign or break it into two lines. One is where you are saying what is minum data type. Data type is integer. Then you are assigning minum a uh, some value that is fifteen. Then you are printing. then in the same way in we you can assign my num as 15 and you want to change it to 20 yes you can change it and display it uh, what is there stored currently stored in my num and final variable however we can add final keyword if you don't want others to overwrite existing values uh, this will declare the variable as a final or a constant which means unchangeable and read only Final int my num is fifty. My num is twenty. So then we generate an error. Cannot assign a value to a final variable. So other types uh, demonstrate demonstrations of how to declare variable uh, of other types. So here int my number equals to five. Float. So you can say float well. Float also you can store then character. Character also you can store. Then boolean, my boolean also you can store. Then string, my text hello can be uh, stored. Similar fashion, I want to display the variable. So how to do I display? I, we use a built-in function called as a println. 
and so in java instead of comma we have we are using a plus so what is this plus will be doing the print line method is often used to display variable to combine both text and a variable we use a plus character so that's what here hello and plus this so you can use a plus character to add a variable or to another variable so you can do here so this we call it as a concatenation so here that's what here uh, in the first name we have john and in the last name we have do and we want to combine these two then you can write first name plus last name and you can print a full name so in the same way we want to add an integers yes we can add them using a plus character so x equals to 5 5 equals to 6 then print them x plus y that value will be printed so I'm declaring many variables yes we can declare so i want x value as 5 but it, that should be integer y is uh, again integer and the value assigned is 6 z also i am uh, saying it is integer and i'm assigning it to 50 and uh, combine all this x plus y plus z so then java identifier all java variables must be identified with unique names these unique names are called identifiers identifiers can be short names like x and y or more descriptive names that is age sum total value it is recommended to use descriptive names in order to create understandable and maintainable code then int minutes per hour equals to 60 then int m equals to 60. the general rule for uh, constructing names for variables that is unique identifier or names can contain letters digits underscore and dollar sign names must begin with letters so the names must start with lowercase letter and it cannot uh, contain a white spaces names can also begin with dollar and uh, underscore so must uh, but we will not use it in this names are case sensitive so case sensitive means small letter capital letters are treated as a different so then reserved words so wherever there is a reserved words we cannot use them as a names or a variables so um, create a variable name car name and assign the value volvo to it yes can anyone say what i have to write in this yes what i have to write here can anyone create variable named car name and assign the value volvo to it yes can anyone answer what i have to enter here yes yes car name car name here volvo volvo Evo, is that right? In double quotes, ma'am. Yeah, true. The answer is right. Yes. So the answer is uh, right. That's how here. Uh, this is one way where you can practice because they give you even uh, whether what you have. Uh, exercised is fine or not you can see some more this we have done some more things like that and we'll stop first one we have given that is what was the thing string car name and here we have given volvo right Submit the answer. It's saying not correct. Yes, should be capital, ma'am. Yes. Submit the answer. Yeah, it's correct. Okay, next one. Create a variable named max speed and assign the value 120. Okay, can anyone say what I have to write? Yeah, you have to say what I have to write here. 
int max speed equals to 120 int max speed equal to 120 yes it's correct next display the sum 5 plus 10 using two variables x and y yeah what i have to write here it's very easy you have to say fast in x is equal to 5 in x equals to 5 yeah it's correct next two will and stop there yeah create a variable called z assign x plus y to it and display the result you what i have to write there int z equal to ma'am and uh, to display we have to dis uh, the variable is at to display. It is displaying. Yeah. Okay. Last one. Yeah. Fill in the missing part to create three variables of the same type using a comma operator. Yeah, what I have to write? Faster. Data type and separator. Comma. Yeah. Int, comma. Here also I have to give. Come on. Yes. yes it's correct. So we'll stop here. We'll continue in, in the next class like this. So I want everyone to be interactive so that uh, even your uh, um, skills will improve for your placements, in at least related to Java.